So the report uses the um, system of environmental economic accounting, which is an international standard developed by the UN, World Bank, IMF, OECD. Uh, and what that means is that it's all standard. Uh, we define things very clearly and we follow certain rules, so we don't double count anything. So in that way we define the uh, forest industry exactly the same way as the ABS does. Here, the economic contribution of agricultural production, water supply and tourism was far greater than that for native timber production. However, it's the harvesting of native forests that reduces the ecosystem services for many of the other activities by creating younger, even-aged stands of trees that are less diverse. And these regrowth forests reduce the water inflows to the reservoirs, they reduce carbon stocks in younger trees, they reduce the scenic amenity for tourism and reduce the habitat condition for biodiversity. What we know is that the, the value added value of the water from these water catchments is about $310 million per year from this ecosystem accounts process. We know that that's about 25 and a half times more than the value added value of the timber that comes from these same areas, about $12 million per year. The ecosystem accounts that have been done for the Central Highlands are really, really insightful for some of the key trade-offs that are being made in the system. One of those key trade-offs is water versus timber. The loss of $12 million by ceasing harvesting of native forests could be exceeded by the increasing value of water supply and carbon storage. There would also be an increase in the habitat condition for biodiversity and tourism and plantation timber production would also likely increase. The mountain ash forest is one of the most carbon dense forests in the world. And so protecting and enhancing these carbon stocks is important for reducing emissions. However, government regulations currently exclude native forests from the carbon market. The key issue here is that the more we log these catchments, the less water that we get. The less water that we get, the more we have to rely on other sources, very expensive sources such as desal plants. So these catchments, which are about one and a half hours from the centre of Melbourne, produce almost all of the water for the city of Melbourne, five million people, and a city that's rapidly growing. Other studies have indicated that Melbourne is going to start to run into serious water issues within the next 10 years. If we want to secure the future of Melbourne and the people of Melbourne and their water supply, then we really need to think about what we are doing in terms of how we manage these catchments. Therefore, we need to actually start removing logging from these areas to guarantee the integrity of the water catchments, the water supply that comes from these areas and the security of Melbourne and Melbourne's population.